Yeah, Greg, I know you'll never be satisfied with a loss, but what you were asking for from the team after Wednesday night was to, to show some fight. You certainly saw plenty of that tonight. Yeah, much, uh, obviously, an improved performance from Wednesday night. Um, you know, I thought we, we played really good basketball for close to 30 minutes um, of that game. You know, the first quarter obviously hurts us down 34-20 uh, at that first break, and a lot of their stuff's in the first eight seconds of clock in that first quarter. So, um, you know, we, we needed to address it, and I think the guys responded positively to what we, we talked about in huddles and timeouts and at halftime, um, you know, really took them out of trance for, for the remainder of the game after the first quarter. So I think our, our intent to defend, um, to keep people in front of us, our aggressiveness in the pick and roll was, was really positive. Uh, you know, we, we, win a, we run the rebound count convincingly, which was a, a real big focus for us. And uh, I thought, you know, some guys really stood up and put their hands up tonight. Like Sobes was really good. Baines has 21 and 11 in 23 minutes. You know, Tyler had a really good second half. DJ had a really good second half. Um, Harry gave us good minutes. Get, like everyone who played contributed. So uh, certainly a positive response after a, a really long day for us yesterday in in the film room and on the practice floor. So look, um, the challenge is now to to put four quarters together on Monday night and then. You know, do it consistently for the for the remaining six games that we have this season. How excited were you what you saw in a, probably a five minute stretch in that third quarter? You you went down twenty two, and then I think by that point you still hadn't hit a three in the game. Then you hit six threes in about three or four minutes, and and you've got all the momentum in the world. I'll ask you in a second about what changed the momentum. But first of all. How excited were you from that patch of basketball that you saw just to show the potential this team's got? Yeah, no, very exciting. Like, and we showed flashes of it like throughout the year. It's, like I said, putting 40 minutes of that potential together um, and, and showcasing that all the time. Like the ball movement, the player movement, the screening, like, you know, the kickouts to, to wide open shooters. Like we didn't make a three in the first half. And like you said, we make six in that patch. Like they're all uncontested because of the work that we do often on the basketball. So when we play like that, we're a very, very talented team. We have a lot of good shooters um, and it makes the game really easy. And, you know, we we get lost in the emotion of things and, and stuff like that sometimes and, and it's hard to arrest runs. But I thought we did a really good job tonight to, to bounce back from 22 down and find a find a way to do that and grind through it. You know, we make them call the first time out of the third quarter. You know, we, we come out of that and keep pressing um, the, the right way. And we, what we did it on was the back of our defense, was, was where it started. You know, people guarding one-on-one. -on -one. You know, the pick and roll D was excellent. The, the off-ball talk and engagement was great. And you know, the more consistently we can do that, the, the better basketball team we are, because then we can create pace, which is where this team's best. What stopped that momentum and seemed seemed to be cruel, at least watching watching from here, because it looked like you had called for the challenge. It, it looked like from the replays we saw that the challenge would have gone your way. Um, and then Golding comes out and hits the three, and then they, they hit two more threes straight after that. Um, yeah. What are your so, thoughts on that whole sequence? Um, yeah, look, um, I, I need to get clarity on it is the first thing. Like it's, so I call, I, the, my process was I call a timeout. I went to the bench and I signaled for a timeout. Um, I indicated that I wanted to challenge the call. I um, was told by the officials that you, I couldn't challenge the call because there was actually no call made. It was a jump ball call, so you can't challenge a jump ball, which is, um, you know, I, like, I was unaware of it. So, but at no point did I cancel my timeout. So I thought at that point in time, we had a group that was rolling. Um, you know, they'd been on the floor together for, for a period of time. You know, there's some motion in the game and I, I wanted the timeout to settle the group um, and look at what the next three, five, seven possessions going into three quarter time looked like because I think we cut it to a two point game at that point. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, 63, 65, Goulding makes a three, we go down, turn it over, think come back, oh board, Tucker sticks a three and then we get a timeout and by that stage it's back to an eight or nine point game or whatever it is. So. Um, you know, it is a game of momentum and that instance right there, we had all the momentum in the game and it was taken away from us. So, look, it's disappointing for the group and they found ways to keep battling, keep fighting and give themselves a chance in the game. But, um, you know, that, that momentum swing was huge for us in, in terms of particularly because of where we're at um, as a group. Um, you know, that quick emotional reset, we just didn't have like it took us two or three possessions and a timeout to get back to the to the level that we needed to be at. So yeah, it's frustrating, and I I need to get clarity on why we didn't get the timeout that we 
went to the bench for before the, the ball was inbounded. So, um, yeah, anyway, you can't change it now, unfortunately, but we do need to understand why that happened. Yeah, I mean, from here, it was it was hard to not feel for you for the way it all unfolded. Um, great to see Baines play so well and have such an impact. How were you able to get him so involved and, and get him to play, play the way that he did tonight? Um... Look, I don't like like sound, make it sound like you're trying to convince him to play. Like that's not the case at all. Like you know, he's a competitor. He wants to be out there. Wants to be with the group. I think um, we've made it a bit of a focus over the last little period to to really give the big fellas some touches. And I think he did a great do- job tonight of sealing and screening and the amount of times he creates seal assists for Sobes and our guards to get downhill and on the rim. So it's not just the volume of touches that he gets. It's all the work that he does to get other people open. And that's when Bangers is at his best. It, it, he just, he, when he makes other people better, like um, with the ceiling and the screening and, you know, we give him the volume of touches, like the O boards, you know, has eight offensive rebounds tonight. Like his activity around the rim was, was huge. Um, you know, his decision-making the post was great. We throw it down there, it's coming back out. Guys are shooting open three. So the attention that he, that his gravity like commands because of the large human being he is like you know he he was really really effective tonight 21 and 11 in 23 minutes um you know it's it's great to to get that production out of him but like i said it's all the peripheral stuff that he does outside of the scoring and rebounding you know the screening rim running he's talked defensively like so like you were out there like was he he was up to the level on every pick and roll for a guy 36 years old and 6'10 doing the work that he was doing on the ball screen is, is huge for us defensively so that's where it starts for him Still only two free throws as well. Yep. No comment. <laughs> no. Yep. Um, so, what, what's your reaction to that game? How do you come away feeling? Are you proud of the team's fight and disappointed to to lose the game? Or how are you feeling? Yeah, obviously disappointed. Um, we want to win. That's simple. But at the same time, you got to look at what happened the other night. Um, and the guys coming back and responding in the right way. Um, like Vanny just said, the way we got after it on the defensive end was just positive signs for taking a step forward in the right direction. Obviously, like I said, it's not fun losing um, and we all want to win. Like, it's why we play the game. But um, yeah, I think it was a step in the right direction for us. How tough has the last couple of days been and how motivated, I guess, as a playing group for you to, to respond and after what happened on Wednesday night? Yeah, I mean, you sort of want to throw that um, in the bin and move on as quick as you can, but we had to face the reality of it and see what we could have been better at and the defensive end and getting after it, uh, a bit more disruption and and doing stuff that way um, was what we looked at. And as competitors and people that want to win, I think we just wanted to play again. that last result, you win by, I mean, you lose by one or lose by 50, it's still a loss, as bad as it does look. Um, But at the end of the day, it's time to regroup and get ready for tonight and try and take that win. But like I said, it was a, we want to win and it's a step in the right direction. We just got to keep building from it. Following on from what Greg was saying about about Bainsey, how much did you enjoy what you were able to do working off each other out there tonight? Yeah, I mean, I've, Love playing with the big fella. He works his ass off to do things, like Vandy said, for other people. Uh, sets great screens. Obviously, he's a big human being, and um, he does a great job of taking his man and um, my defender and my, like the rest of our defenders out of the play and, and freeing us up a lot. So it is a lot of fun playing with someone who has a high IQ and it's been around the world and, and knows the game really well, but at the end of the day, just wants to do stuff for other people too. Six games to go. Apart from the six wins that you would love to get, what do you hope to get out of these these last six games, Sobs? I mean, it's just to continue what I just talked about before, just keep stepping in the right direction with what we're trying to do and how we want to play and play the right way, really getting after it and um, setting the tone on the defensive end and then whatever happens on the offensive end happens. We've got enough talent down there, but um, yeah, it's just really about um, continuing to build in the right direction with the group we have. Um, and yeah, I think we've got to enjoy playing these last games together as well. Um, there's a part of that that needs to come back. Um, but yeah, that, those be the main things that we're trying to focus on. And Greg, just lastly for me, what are your thoughts on Monday night's game? It's a pretty hectic schedule that you're 
in the middle of right now. I think it'll be your third game in, what, five days and the Phoenix wouldn't have played for more than a week. So that makes it challenging. But what are your thoughts on, on heading down to Melbourne to take them on? Yeah, I mean, like, challenging whatever everyone's done it right like everyone's had these busy patches in schedules and whatever so there's no excuses in terms of that like you look at the breakers the other night they play in perth on tuesday probably fly all day wednesday and play united on thursday night in christchurch so you know the schedule is the schedule and you have to front up and play and compete and that's what professional athletes get to do and we're very very lucky to do it so um it's another playoff type game like that one was for melbourne like for you know, we obviously aren't going to make the playoffs. Um, we have some things that we want to achieve as a group and we'll keep working towards that for these last six games. But basically everyone that we play, aside from Illawarra, is trying to make the playoffs. Um, so guys get to play in an environment that's like a playoff type environment, which is going to be Phoenix on, on Monday night. Like they, I think they've lost four straight or something. Um, whatever it is, they've got their full group back with um, Brown and Kel and Brockoff and, and everyone's available. So we've got to go in there and play, play a, a very good basketball team who, who want to play playoffs, like play in the playoffs. So we have to turn around quickly. We've got to recover. We've got to get on a flight tomorrow, get in, dive into the scout and, and go and play Southeast Monday night. So there's no excuses. It's, you know, we get to do what we do and everyone enjoys doing it. Thanks very much, guys. Dylan, did you have a question? Yeah, just one more for you, so um, you mentioned you were uh, losing, you'd lost a little bit of enjoyment over the last little patch. How do you guys, as a group, try and get that back um, in the late, late part of the season? Yeah, I mean, obviously losing by big margins takes a bit of a toll on you, um, and we've had a few of them. Um, but it's more just a group sticking together. Um, we have a good group of guys that like being around each other. It's just transferring that onto the court for these last games and the remainder of the year. and. Um, We'll just continue to focus on playing hard, playing the right way that, that the coaches want us to play and um, we'll let the rest take care of itself. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. All good. Thanks, guys.